what is good we're back we got our guy austin we are going to run through an nfl style mock draft highlighting the offensive side of things of course because this is a bit more of a fantasy slanted show here but something a little different gonna talk through the first round of an nfl draft get some landing spots under our belt gonna try to keep it as realistic as we think but what does that even mean at this point uh austin how you doing man you ready to make these picks What's up, man? How you doing, Casey? I'm Good. excited. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to go through all 32 picks. And spoiler, we're not going to have any trades. I'm going to try and focus on making this as realistic of an NFL draft as possible. Not what I would do. We're going to focus on what reality is. So yeah, we can comment it's be a along fun the way one. on if you might do something a little different there, what you'd like to see. So. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Want me to get things going? Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go 1-1. One, one. Bears on the clock. Uh, obviously, they they... We're going to say in this scenario, well, you take it away. All right. I'm going to just come out and say it, man. It's got to be, has to be absolute 100% Caleb Williams. Yes. I'm a fan. Let me, let me be clear. I am a fan of Justin Fields. I believe he's going to be a starting quarterback in 2024 for a new team. He's going to be on a different roster. But in this situation, man, Chicago has now had the first overall pick back to back years. Not only did they pass on Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, uh, Bryce Young, everybody from the 23 class. But here we are in 2024. They're back on the clock at the 101 again. And now you I would argue they have the best quarterback prospect over the past two years over the, you know, over maybe since Trevor Lawrence. It's been a while. So I think they're ecstatic to land Caleb Williams here at the 101. That pick is not for sale, by the way. They're not picking up the phone. Nothing, man. There, There's no there's no chance they do not land Caleb, Caleb Williams. That's what I firmly believe. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree there. They'd be silly not to. Like, you're, if, if you're the GM in, at this point, right? Yeah, it'd be great. The idea of trading back and getting a haul would be, would be great, and you could set it up. But if Caleb goes anywhere else and does something special, like you're, I feel like you're pretty much fired anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you might as well just pick Caleb and move on. And and furthermore, like a lot of talk about the Justin Fields, you know, whether they pick, tried to trade him now or they're not trading him. I, I, there's no way they didn't try to trade him before this at some point. I think they even alluded to it at one point saying we're going to try to do the best by Justin uh, that we can. So I think all this other stuff is just smoke and mirrors and nonsense. But like. They shouldn't even be in this position. They didn't earn this pick. They traded for this pick. So if they had not made this trade, they wouldn't even have to be fielding these questions. Fields would just be their guy moving forward again. So it's crazy that, you know, a nice move by them has put him in this situation to obviously draft Caleb Williams, which I think they should do. I think a lot of people think they should do. But, um, you know, it's, it's also caused quite a quite a stir here. Um, I, I think Justin Fields is fine. I think at this point you have to wait until the NFL draft until somebody's plans to bring in a quarterback kind of got foiled a little bit. Uh, but some of these people's realistic or what they thought were their realistic expectations of what Fields should be worth. You've been playing too much fantasy because that's not how the real world works. And tra- you've seen, there's not very many times trades go down where you're like, oh, yeah, that, that value was like exactly. What, it's always way, way, way less than you think it is. So. Um, you know, the, the the nonsense of what fields should have been worth or would have been worth or could have been worth had polls not fumbled. And it's like, I don't know how much he even really fumbled here. So I think mm-hmm. it's just kind of what it was. There's, the book is out on fields. Like you got to design an offense around them. And, and you hope that this scenario was a little bit more of what, you know, failed him than him being the quarterback, which I think he's a fine player. I think he's he can be very, very dynamic fantasy wise. He's great, but now we're potentially at a second destination. If it doesn't work out for a year or two, all of a sudden you're sitting there going, hmm, it's Fields, you know, the starter. So um, pick one, Caleb Williams. Uh, no, no, no funny business here. Um, let's go to pick two. So what I truly believe is going to happen, it's going to be Drake May to the Washington Commanders. I've seen so much hype around Jaden Daniels as the 102 to the Washington Commanders. I don't believe it. I really don't think it's going to happen. With all due respect to Jaden Daniels, I firmly believe that it's going to be Drake May, UNC's quarterback, landing in Washington, the second overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. I think this is a franchise that, you know, let's let's be honest, man. It's a new era in Washington, right? They should be ecstatic. They should be excited. Mm. 
Um, you know, it, it's going to be quarterback, quarterback, in my opinion. And, and you know, this is also I'm trying to focus on reality. I just I think that Washington can pair Drake May with, you know, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson and a lot of these offensive weapons there. It's it's going to be it's going to be Austin Eckler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, isn't that crazy, man? It's great that we're recording on uh, what is it Tuesday night, man? This has been such a such a chaotic week. These past yeah. forty eight hours have just been absurd. One hundred percent. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think I think this is Drake May, unless somehow they can Washington can get their hands on the hometown kid and Caleb here, which I don't know why you would or what you would you know whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's Drake May. I think that's what you got to do. Washington's just breaking everything down to the studs, trying to get a new stadium, trying to just change everything back around, get rid of the smell of Dan Snyder, uh, Snyder um, and kind of move forward and getting just a fresh, new, shiny object as a quarterback, um, I think is, is, is the way to go here. And I think it's going to be Drake May as well. Um, let's go to pick three here. So this is, a, this is an interesting one. Uh, what do you think here, Austin, the Patriots? So New England's on the clock, third overall pick. I have them landing Jaden Daniels. I believe that's what they're going to do, right? I, I think that they would have went Drake May if he had fallen to them, right? Of, of course, right? Because it's going to go, I, I firmly believe it'll go quarterback, 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 regardless. I, I really, you know, another player that crossed my mind, of course, the top wide receiver in this class in Marvin Harrison Jr. There, you know, definitely something that they're going to strongly consider, but the reason they go Jade, I'm sorry, the reason they go Jaden Daniels is because they're going to fo- focus on position value. They're going to try and get someone that they can truly build their franchise around. They want they want the keys. They they want the guy who has the keys for the next 10 plus years, man. They want someone who can truly turn around this franchise single handedly. And yes, they're still going to have to build around him. Hopefully they go land somebody like Calvin Ridley or another, maybe T Higgins. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to get that aggressive, but they have to draft receivers. They, they absolutely have a lot of holes to fill in New England and quarterback is the most important. So Jaden Daniels is the third overall pick. How yeah, do you feel? I, I, I tend to agree. It's, it's, it's not, it's chalky. You could, depending on who you like, where, whatever, but I think this is, about right. I think the Patriots typically are trade backers, but again, new new uh, management, new head coach, new regime. From everything they're saying, it seems like they just they're changing the whole direction, whole dynamic of what the Patriots are moving into the into the new generation here. I think them bringing in Jacoby Brissett is fantastic. You can then potentially let Jaden Daniels sit for a year because you're not going to put him in a situation right now with what you have to really succeed, which is a lot of problems that we run into in the league is we don't let these guys develop for at least three quarters of a season behind somebody. And, and Brissett, great leader, great human, been playing the quarterback position for a while, can come in and, and quiet things down in that locker room, show you how things are supposed to be done. And Jaden Daniels can kind of come in behind him um, and, and be, you know, learn how to run an offense and then, you know, obviously a super dynamic player there. So I would love to see the Patriots do that. I think that's what they're going to do. Um, stick and pick, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's what you're going to see here. Jaden Daniels uh, at three. So at number four, we got Arizona Cardinals. I don't think this is a mystery either. So what do you got for us? <laughs> so this draft is great for content purposes, man. We have three consecutive quarterbacks off the board. And then here we have with the fourth overall pick, the first wide receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. I think this is really going to, you know, I, th- I believe that the Arizona Cardinals are going to heavily weigh their options. And I think they're going to strongly consider Malik Neighbors as well at this fourth overall pick. But I think they ultimately land on Marvin Harrison Jr. They, I don't even want to call it like playing it safe. They, they just take a blue chip prospect, a true blue chip prospect, someone that they're more than infatuated with. This is exactly what they need, man. They really don't have any wide receivers at this point, right? Uh, it's yeah. wild that I know you love Marquise Hollywood Brown. It is wild that he's still a free agent this far into free agency. Um, and then Michael Wilson Jr., you know, at this point, him and Trey McBride feel like the only offensive weapons. Or w- w- Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think of what course, James Conner, but. James Conner, they, they brought in DJ Dallas. Um, they still have Rondell Moore, I think, for a year. Um, and then they they had they they brought in uh, Elijah Higgins, maybe. He was a, a draft, a wide receiver, converted tight end last year who actually kind of made some noise. I kind of like him, deep stash fantasy. Um, but I think 
you haven't really seen any receivers outside of a few guys kind of resign, or we saw Mooney kind of move around. But the bigger the, the bigger ticket item is Calvin Ridley's um, and, and Hollywood's kind of sticking, you know, kind of where they are. Calvin Ridley might be sticking around because of how it, the pick might get if he stays until tomorrow at four. They don't have to give up a two; they only give up a three, um, and then he ends up, you know, maybe going back to Jacksonville or going to New England. But it helps the Jaguars out. But I think what we're seeing here is potentially there's a really strong class of wide receivers. We're seeing it right here. Neighbors or Harrison, you can kind of go either way. We think it's going to be Harrison, but maybe that's kind of uh, stymieing the uh, free agent uh, wide receiver pool right off the rip to go fast and furious like we did with the running backs opposite. You know, not a great class, at least as far as one A's, a lot of one B's potentially with chance to be one A's in this in this running back class. Uh, so I think that that could be part of what we're kind of seeing right now. I kind of would like to see Hollywood go back there just to surround Kyler with as much as possible because I like Hollywood mm-hmm. and I like their rapport together. And adding Marvin Harrison here is, I think, the pick. So I'm right there with you, lockstep uh, this whole way so far. So I think this is uh, where it could get a little interesting here with this next pick. We got charges on the, uh, again, new regime, new people. Harbs is in town. Greg Roman, uh, what you thinking here? So I- – I feel like this is where the draft kind of begins in a way. The fifth overall pick, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock. I have them taking Malik Neighbors, and I think this is one of the more interesting picks, right? So they don't have to go wide receiver. Of course, they still have Mike Williams. They still have Keenan Allen. But yes, they're both older, both banged up, both got hurt last year. Uh, Of course, they drafted Quinton Johnston in the first round last season, right? I understand all that. But man, again, this is another true blue chip type of talent at the wide receiver position. I I firmly believe it's like 1A, 1B, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. There isn't a gap. They're in the Mm -hmm. same tier, in my opinion. That's where I'm at. And I think the Chargers, after doing all their due diligence, their research, they're kind of in the same boat. I think their front office, their GM is going to have a relatively similar thought process. And they're going to pull trigger on Malik Neighbors, the fifth overall pick. I think they're going to be more than happy with this pick and you know they you know at this point man here's this this is my opinion if you're gonna succeed in the afc west if you're gonna beat patrick mahomes and the kansas city chiefs you just have to outscore them at this point and you need more firepower and malik neighbors gives justin herbert and the chargers exactly that how do you feel about this pick casey yeah, I think the Chargers are just in a really good position here. They can kind of do whatever they want. If they want to go Brock Bowers, they can and get themselves a tight end, which is a position of need. They can certainly go wide receiver here, which is potentially a position of need with Mike Williams being old and hurt and Keenan Allen being older. Great, but you know, still older. And and we don't know what we're going to get from Quentin Johnston. The regime didn't take him. You know, we, we don't even really know there. And then, you know, Gerald Everett's gone. I think the only one of the Stone Smart and, um, I'm drawing a blank on the other guy's name. Uh, Donald Parham, uh, the only two tight ends left on the. Uh, oh, maybe they signed. Uh, they signed somebody, I think, in in this uh, cycle here, but maybe a little bit more of a blocker. Um, I'm I'm drawing a blank on who it was, but I'll, I'll I'll report back here once once Austin's back on the mic who they got. But I'm 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 with you here. I, th- I think it could either come down. They could also go offensive lineman again if they just wanted to really put a statement on hey this is what Jim Harbaugh is going to do what he's pretty much always done at every stop is just be dominant in the trenches run the dog shit out of the football have a guy who can manage at quarterback which he has more than that in Herbert um, and then you know your wide receivers could be don't need to be super duper elite you know last time he was in you know you had Crabtree as basically your main guy out there not that they were you know bad by any means they went to the super bowl but they were their identity was built around frank gore and vernon davis you know um and and crabtree operating at a a pretty high level and then you go over to the next stops and everywhere he's gone stanford san diego state uh then michigan wins the same way He's he's a classic power football kind of guy um, so I could see offensive linemen here too, but I definitely don't hate Malik neighbors. It's definitely a, a position of need and it makes a lot of sense here. So, um, uh, Malik neighbors at five, let's go G man at six. What do you got for, uh, is this year? Uh, you, you're up there, but you like the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has got to be one of the most polarizing, most, uh, difficult picks to predict in my, in the entire first round i would argue man the new york giants 
what are they going to do? They just lost Saquon Barkley. They are all over the place. They have a million holes. There's rumors about Daniel Jones parting ways or just, man, I, it's, this is, this is truly so interesting to me. I am so excited for the NFL draft for this pick specifically. I have a six consecutive offensive player going. I have Rome Odunze. I don't think they're going to mess Ooh. around. I've said this for about three years now, and I've been wrong for about three years now that they are going <laughs> to go wide receiver. And every time I look silly and here we are three years later and I'm like, man, they got like Darius Slayton and like Paris Campbell and uh, uh, Sterling Shepard. It's like uh, Wandell Robinson. Wanda, they like, got, they got like, Wandell like, and, and like, Darren Waller was considered retired, but right. he came back and they, and they drafted Hyatt last year, which right. Um, you know, right. It is what it, it is. So you, it's just, you, you like Rome here. I love Rome here. And I think mm. the Giants do too, man. But it's just like, fellas, what are y'all doing? Like, <laughs> please, please, please. You paid your quarterback 40 years, $160 million. Daniel Jones, build around him. Give him some valuable assets. He needs something, right? I'm not the biggest Daniel Jones advocate by any means. But this, you need to build around the kid. You need to, man. You paid him for, for a reason. Clearly, you believe in him. So let's build around him. Hand him a great wide receiver, Candidly, wide receiver three in my personal rankings in the 2024 class, Roma Dunze. Yes, the New York Giants need DBs. They need offensive line uh, linebackers. Uh, you could argue a quarterback, but I think wide receiver is their main priority. So I, I love Rome here. So yeah. how do you feel about this pick, Casey? Sixth overall. I mean, I think it's definitely something they need. Is it where they're going to go? I mean, what could help lean towards this a little bit is that they did attack um, in free agency, some offensive line issues, which is they've been struggling through. They've tried to do it through the draft. They've kind of hit on some of it, but they still need some. Um, but they, they've they've brought in um, from the the Packers, they brought in Runyon, and then from uh, the Raiders, they brought in uh, Jermaine Illuminor, something along those lines. Not one hundred percent sure how to say his actual name there, but. Uh, a little bit more of a rotational. He's played tackle and guard and, and Runyon, uh, a really good player in his own right um, for, for the Packers there. So they're trying to bolster up the line there. Uh, and I think doing a pretty good job. That's that's where winning football starts and ends in the trenches. Uh, so I could see them taking Joe Alt here and just saying, hey, we're we're going to build here. We're going to let Daniel Jones get out the door out of this next year, out of the contract, and then we're going to be built – and ready to go, and then we'll address the quarterback position um, at that particular time. But they certainly need a, a difference maker, so I can't be upset about Roma Dunze here. So how about the Tennessee Titans, who could also use Roma Dunze, but could also use Joe Alt or whoever your favorite offensive lineman is. So who do you think here at seven for the Tennessee Titans? Yep, and you spoiled it, Casey. That's exactly where I'm going to go. Joe Alt, seventh overall to the Tennessee Titans. I think this is just a perfect fit. I think this is a value, man. Joe Alt, I would argue, is a top three, top four player in this entire draft. And this draft is stacked. It's loaded. That's how high I think of the six foot eight absolute specimen in Joe Alt. He's a tackle out of Notre Dame, and he's just the perfect fit for this Tennessee Titans team and let's build around Will Levis. Clearly they value Will Levis pretty high. If they traded up to get him, I believe it was 33rd overall, right? It was the second pick in the second round, right? There's only 31 picks last year. Remember, I think Miami mm -hmm. lost their first round pick. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw Joey Porter Jr. Go 32nd overall to Pittsburgh. The very next pick 33rd was Will Levis. So let's build around the kid, right? They, again, they traded up to draft him. And I believe D hop is still under contract for one more season. Let's let's move forward with with a healthy upright Will Levis. Let's get some more receivers too. I think a receiver is uh, they were strongly considering it here. And if a Dunze fell, I believe that's absolutely where they would have won. I was listening to their GM, the Tennessee Titans GM in an interview. And if you listen to how he was talking, man, it really sounded like they were trying to prioritize prioritize wide receiver o over any other position and it just in this case i don't think they're going to reach on someone like brian thomas jr or xavier worthy i think that they're going to simply focus on bpa based off of how the draft unfolded and they land joe all they're ecstatic uh they're connor mcgregor walking up to the podium all mm. jacked up man I, I that's that's how i feel what uh yeah. what are your thoughts on joe Alt to the uh, tennessee titans seventh overall I love it. I, I think that's exactly what they need. Um, 
you add you added Cushenberry or in as a center there uh, as a four year fifty million dollar contract for him. Um, I believe they did they draft for the first uh, offensive lineman in the first round last year. Um, uh, Tennessee. Peter Skaronsky, that's correct. Yep. And so you know now we can. We, they were terrible last year. Now they brought in Pollard. They got Spears. We, we're, we're moving forward. We're moving it. We got Bill Callahan. Where offense is going in a different direction, um, but we need to get the protection. So hundred percent down with. Uh, alt here or whoever you know your favorite tackle is it if it's the Oregon State guy great um, you know I'm not an offensive tackle guru uh, so we'll take Joe Alt and we'll keep it moving how about Atlanta Falcons they've answered the bell with their needs at quarterback so no more speculation there um, they could potentially even trade back here and do something fun um, and, and see if somebody wants to come up and get JJ McCarthy or if somebody wants to come up and get one of the other quarterbacks here this would, wouldn't be a terrible spot uh, but Atlanta Falcons on the clock. They signed Mooney. Uh, they already have a pretty mm-hmm. decent offensive line. Defense maybe has some holes in it. So maybe the first defensive player going here. What are your thoughts with Atlanta? That's exactly where they're going to go, Casey. They're taking the edge rusher out of Alabama, Dallas Turner. I think this is a really, really good fit. They're going to be very, very happy with this pick, man. Again, it's wild that we are at pick eight. The, and, and the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock and they are walking away with the first defensive player in this draft. And man, this is reality. Like this isn't just this isn't just my opinion, right? This is truly, truly a, a fair possibility that this actually does occur. Uh, you saw how the you know the, the board unfolded. We had three quarterbacks go. Then we had three top tier wide receivers go. And then we had Joe all. And here we are. Dallas Turner, the first defensive player off the board. Um, here's one thing I'll say. You can never have too many edge edge rushers. You can never have too many edge rushers. Yeah. And the Falcons are, are going to be simply a team that now has a significantly higher chance at not only competing, but winning the NFC South. I think at this point, after landing Kirk Cousins, I would I, I would imagine they're favored to win the NFC South. How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, that's that's I think that's a, if I'm Cousins, that's a big reason why I want to go there. It's easy path. Yeah, uh, you got to go through Baker and then. Derek Carr and the Saints, which, you know, n- you know, the in division, those guys always play each other really tough. Uh, the Saints are typically a tough out. Carolina hopefully can turn things around. They're invested in the offensive line over there uh, over the past two days and just landed Deontay Johnson. So um, trying to be a more formidable opponent there in Carolina. But, yeah, I think this is an easy path to wins. They got to be the favorite to come out. Kirk Cousins finally getting your your fantasy players in Atlanta, hopefully off the ground with with a. Uh, Sean McVay esque system coming in there. Three wides. They added Mooney. Uh, they got Pitts. You know, be be a lot of fun here. Bijan uh, to the moon, and and everything's real excited down there. Uh, so Kirk D Cousins down to Atlanta. Whole lot of fun. Uh, let's let's keep it moving to pick nine here with the Bears. We got Chicago back on the clock at nine here. What are we doing? So the first overall pick, the Chicago Bears drafted Caleb Williams. They're back on the clock here. The ninth overall pick. They're walking away with Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. Mm. This kid. He's got some smoke crushed, to him right now. Yeah. Rush at the NFL combine, man. He bolstered his NFL draft capital astronomically. He was already going to go, in my opinion, as I would say a mid first. And here we are ninth overall. He's going er- pretty early first round pick. Oh, my God. God, I mean, talk about someone who made a lot of money at the NFL Combine. He's he's probably one of the better just he, I would argue he is one of the better fits that we've seen in recent years for the Chicago Bears. Uh, they, they, they absolutely need more help at corner. Uh, he was electric at college. He dominated at Toledo. And and here we are, man. It's it's wild that they have two first round picks in the top nine. So they're sitting pretty. I think if you're a Chicago fan, you're ecstatic. You are sitting there thinking, is this finally the first time since probably like 1985 where <laughs> we're feeling pretty good about our franchise? Like we have we feel like we've finally turned the page. We're on to a new chapter. Caleb's leading the way. We're adding Quinion Mitchell. Things are looking good in Chicago. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't say I, I know exactly who he is. I, I, well, I do know exactly who he is. I can't say I, I know enough to say exactly where I think he'll go, but he's seemingly coming in as at least one of the top two corners here has been crushing, um, I believe, since the senior bowl down mm-hmm. there and then came in yep. and, and really lit it up in the combine. So I don't hate that at all. Uh, let's keep it moving here. Let's go to the New York Jets, the other New York team. They need a wide receiver. They could use a they tackle. Do. Maybe they're getting Bakhtiari. 
Uh, not a whole lot of moves going on. Is it Brock Bowers going here right now, or are we going to get the uh, the tackle from Oregon State, the tackle from Washington? What are we thinking here? With the tenth overall pick, the New York Jets are selecting Olu Fashanu tackle out of Penn State. So, Ooh. man, this this is I, I don't want to sound repetitive because I keep I feel like I keep saying this is where it gets interesting. But God, this whole draft is intriguing to me. Uh, the Jets could have went wide receiver here again. It's not how the draft unfolded it wasn't necessarily ideal for them in my personal opinion right again we see three wide receivers to off the board top six i really really firmly believe that if roma dunze was here they would pair him with aaron Rodgers, with Brees hall with garrett wilson and that jets offense would be that that would be scary man but yeah. uh, we have to prioritize that offensive line we have to ke- clearly the new york jets have to keep aaron rodgers upright if that does not happen of course they are not going anywhere so yeah. they're just simply going to you know go bpa approach right olu right. at 10 feels yeah. like feels like a value yeah they are they got to keep him off the presidential ticket too so that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's, that's, that's that another battle crazy. they're going to have to face um so i think but in these last two spots, Bears, Jets here, I know, you know, I like to pick for the Bears and, I, you know, I, I know the Jets need some offensive line help. But this seems mm-hmm. like with the three teams behind them, all three needing a quarterback, this could be potential trade areas where if they're if if J.J. hasn't gone yet, which, you know, I think both of us are a little down on J.J. So some people could have said, hey, J.J. to the Giants even uh, up there. Um, but. I think this is a trade around spot where there's a couple of tackles here. They can move back a spot or two. Somebody can come up and get their quarterback and, and, and um, the jets still get their guy. But I, I like it. I think that's what they got to do. They got to take a tackle here. We can find wide receivers. We got a million of them in the draft. Um, and, and we're, we're good. We know Aaron doesn't even like the young wide receivers. Um, so um, we'll, we'll, I like the tackle pick here. So let's go to Minnesota at 11. Obviously the flip side of, of Kirk cousins leaves the gap. They've signed Sam Donald as clear stop gap material here um, Mm -hmm. to, to be able to have an option of rolling Sam out for a year or a half a year or whatever it is. Um, And, and then obviously I think the the choice here has got to be quarterback, right? So Casey, this is going to be one of the most surprising picks I have. I actually do not have them landing a quarterback in the first round. I know. I, uh, I, I, I really I don't think that they're infatuated with someone in the draft. I think they're going to move forward with Jerzon Newton. I think they're going to be really looking to prioritize the quarterback position in. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think they're going to be able to land Justin Fields either just because he's simply in the same division. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's a pretty logical, rational thought process. It's uh, Jerzon Newton is a player that I think they're going to be very, very confident in. Uh, he he dominates. At Illinois, I think that's you know, man, people, you know, Minnesota's got so much going on right now. Of course, they still have Ty Chandler. They just added Aaron Jones. Speaking of Mm -hmm. you know, players, uh, star players that are in their division, uh, you know, that was wild to see that Aaron Jones landed in Minnesota. I think that I don't know if they end up rolling out Sam Darnold week one. I'm not necessarily sure who their starting quarterback is going to be. I think it's kind of a mystery. Again, this is this in my opinion, it's going to more be more of like a BPA type of approach for Minnesota. And I think it just comes down to them not being, again, infatuated with any of these quarterback prospects remaining. That's uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, maybe 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 I'm wildly off here, but. But uh, I think I think we're going to be surprised in a lot of ways throughout this 2024 draft. Yeah, I mean, attack him in the comments. I think I think it's um, I think it's probably J.J. McCarthy here. I mean, obviously, I'm a Penix guy, so I think Penix would be a good fit in that system. People don't think Penix is going that high. Maybe he won't. Maybe he will. We shall see. That's why it's nobody knows. You can pretend you know, but nobody knows until we get to the draft. Um, so you're going D lineman there. Um, let's go to the Broncos at pick 12. Obviously, again. Mm-hmm. We got Stidham, maybe. I don't even know if he's still there. I don't, who, who knows who the Broncos quarterback is? So what are we doing here? So 12th overall pick, Denver Broncos on the clock, and they are selecting J.J. McCarthy. Mm-hmm. They are they are running. They are sprinting into Roger Goodell, handing them their card. And, and man, this is... 
This is where things get really, really heated. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, obviously, you know, relatively smaller body of work at Michigan, wasn't asked to do nearly as much. Russell Wilson is no longer in the picture at Denver. J.J. McCarthy comes in here, 12th overall pick. I think that Sean Payton is relieved. I think he's happy to finally get, quote unquote, his guy, right? It's a new era in Denver. Just got rid of Jerry Judy. He's now with with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, feels like Denver right now is the epitome of, of a rebuilding roster, right? New quarterback, uh, clearing out their wide receiver room to a certain degree. Um, this is uh, Denver's exciting, right? Denver's one of those teams that, again, it feels like there's a, there's a lot of holes. Like they definitely need a quarterback. They need, I would argue, one or two more wide receivers. They could use uh, an edge rusher cornerback i even think that they could use a center so uh denver could go a lot of ways here but they uh, they have to focus on quarterback and i think that sean payton is ultimately in their gm's ear yelling you know you're gonna get my guy for me yeah i think uh that if this is the case then i think you are absolutely right with with, with what denver would be uh doing there so uh, let's move on to the next pick here we have um draw not high enough. Uh, we got the Oakland Raiders at pick 13. Lucky number 13 for for the Vegas Raiders. Sorry. Uh, who, who you got going here? Yeah, the 13th overall tackle out of Oregon State, Talise Fuaga. So here we go, man. This is, uh, this is another intriguing pick to me. I think that they're going to just simply prioritize their offensive line. I think the Raiders have a, another team that's flawed that is far from truly competing and and winning that AFC South, right? They can compete for the wild card. I do not see them knocking off the Chiefs in the foreseeable future until there is significant improvement in that roster from top to bottom. Um, yes, quarterback is definitely in play here, and I almost had them going Penix. I thought that Penix was someone they will strongly consider uh, remember, Josh Jacobs is now at the time of recording. He is now in Green Bay. They could have gone. Run, I mean, not that they were going to go running back, but but running back is another position that they're going to probably need to fill. I know they still got Zamir White uh, offensive line, I think, is one of their biggest needs. So for them to land Talise Fuaga, I think they're going to be very happy. Uh, and I even think they need help at corner as well. So um, that's uh, that I'll keep it short and sweet. That's all I got to say about the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> I like it. Uh, they got they obviously signed Minshew there, so they're they got themselves a little stopgap if they need it, um, a bridge to to the next one. Maybe maybe it's Fields. Maybe it's uh, nobody in this draft. Who knows? Seems like Jimmy G is going to get cut. Um, so maybe they got some plans of trying to trade up and get in this quarterback mix too. Uh, but. I don't hate. I'm never going to be upset about drafting the big nasties in the trenches there. So, mm-hmm. who? What are we doing in in New Orleans here? For, pick 14, New Orleans Saints on the clock. What you doing? So this is where Michael Penix Jr. comes off the board. Whoa! We, we have a. This is our fifth quarterback, correct? Fifth quarterback, 14 picks. I think that the Saints are just impatient at this point. I think that they're going to piss off Derek Carr by doing this. I think that they're going to surprise people. And I don't want to call this like necessarily a reach. I think that they just want to get their guy. Um, and it's simply, it feels like there's, there's, yeah, I know there's still Bo Nix on the board, but it feels like at this point, man, there's a, there's not many options for the New Orleans Saints. I don't think they're going to land Justin Fields. Um, Again, Derek Carr, I, I'm telling you, man, I don't think I deep down, I know things are not looking bright in New Orleans. I know they are not infatuated. I know that they're not necessarily happy with where Derek Carr's playing level is at. I know Derek Carr is probably not very happy either. So this is going to cause a lot of tension. And I think that Michael Penix Jr. here, he has at the 14th overall pick makes a lot of sense. I think his you know, success in college at Washington is truly uh it, he had such a large body of work, enough success. So mid first round pick, this is, this is, this is how, how I have the draft unfolding. How do you feel about this? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't think they're taking Penix there. I, I would see them probably either go in trenches one side or the mm-hmm. other. Um, maybe um, the Alabama uh, JC Latham. Yep. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they grab him or, uh, Mims from, from Georgia. 
Uh, maybe they can grab him. I don't know if he's going to play tackle or guard. I'm not, like I said, not not 100% up on exactly everything that that every position does uh, just yet in the draft. Uh, but I can't be mad at it. I love Penix, so I'm, I'm not going to be upset at all here. So let's, let's keep it moving to uh, the – Indianapolis Colts here at pick 15, your boys. Um, and I mean, I think, I think I know what you're going to do here. So what do you got? Yeah, I think the Colts are getting very, very lucky in this situation. If this is actually how it unfolds, they have to take Brock Bowers here. Tight end out of Georgia, 15 overall. Uh, Colts need more more f- firepower on offense. I, I, I like Josh Jones. Michael Pittman just got extended three years, 71 million, I believe. So good on Chris Ballard for doing that. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor's still there, but man, they got to improve from Mo Alley Cox. They have to get they have to get a legit playmaker, a legit tight end. So Brock Bowers here, 15, I think makes a lot of sense for the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. No, I, I, if he's there, that's a I think that's an auto pick um mm-hmm. for them. So uh I would I would for sure say uh, Brock Bowers here so a little foreshadowing but I, I I don't know how you don't pick Brock Bowers at 15 if you're the Colts there I mean obviously you would like to see what Jelani Woods could do um, but you know we haven't quite got to see him uh, but t- you got to take Brock if he's there so I agree 100 uh, percent let's go pick 16 Seattle Seahawks on the clock what you so doing S- Seattle Seahawks 16th overall walking away with Jared verse edge rusher out of Florida State, played at Albany earlier in uh, his collegiate career. Man, this feels like a hell of a value. 16 overall. They're going to be ecstatic. Shout out Big D. He's probably ecstatic. Listen to this. Uh, I think that this is such a true dynamic playmaker. He's just a beast, man. He's a freak of nature. If you watch the tape, if you watch him at FSU, oh my God, he is, he is so, he is built out of a lab, like pound for pound. Jared Verse was, he, he's just a beast, dude. So his, uh, he, he's got to be a phenomenal addition for the Seattle Seahawks defense. Yeah, they just they brought in a very defensive minded head coach. Um, so we shall see exactly what they do in the draft. Uh, but I I feels like Jared Verse coming off the block at this point is is pretty uh pretty solid. And that's the first edge defender coming off the board, which you know, I feel like any of those edge guys could go really at any point. People love them, you need them, gotta have them. Um, so yeah, Jared Verse 16, I'm about 17, Jacksonville Jaguars. What do we what do we think old Trent Balky will do down here? All right, Casey, he's making a splash here. 17th overall, Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. They are taking Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, oh, oh. Wide receiver right. out of LSU. Uh, man, I don't know what's going to happen with Calvin Ridley. I don't know. Uh, I know the Patriots were in deep talks with him today, really trying to pursue him. It sounded like he was kind of leaning towards going back to Jacksonville, but then they would have to forfeit a second round pick in this draft. I don't necessarily know if they want to do that and pay him. I don't think they do. Obviously, Christian Kirk signed that massive deal uh, two seasons ago. He's still under contract for multiple years. So I know they just added Gabe Davis. I'm not the biggest fan of Gabe Davis, and I don't think that they're necessarily... I don't think they believe that Gabe Davis is is the answer long term. He's a solid two. I don't. I don't even think that they they believe that. I think yeah. they're gonna they're gonna try and get. I don't want to call Brian Thomas Jr. a blue chip talent because I don't believe that he is. But I think he's close to it. He ran a four three three. I believe a crazy crazy vert. Just great metrics. Uh, great measurables. Uh, just incredible production, 1,177 yards, 17 touchdowns, first in college football. Brian Thomas Jr., that is. So if you're a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, you have to be pumped about this. Yeah. No, Jacksonville uh, taking taking Brian Thomas is 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 a shot. They they took Gabe Davis, who I think fits, fits a need for them, having somebody you know who's a little bit more of a uh, kind of X outside guy who can attack just vertically, and that's kind of his role, good, good team player. Um, but Brian Thomas would certainly be a splash here for for Brian for for Jacksonville. Uh, definitely don't hate it. Would we'll, you know keep they, they've already hit a couple of guys back in those trenches. Excuse me. Um, so I like that. I'm I, like I said. There's a lot. Seems like there's a lot of good offensive linemen in this first round, and and some of them have gone already. So 
Um, I'd be fine with them taking another offensive lineman. I'd also be fine with them taking, you know, another player on defense. But Brian Thomas is is a luxury pick to add to uh, the arsenal with Trevor Lawrence. So not terribly upset about it. How about 18 going over to Cincinnati with the Bengals? Um, we got T Higgins on a franchise tag. Uh, we lost Tyler Boyd where we did sign Gusecki. Uh, so let's what, what are we thinking for Cincy here? Real simple pick, Casey. They are taking tackle out of Alabama. J.C. Latham, who you mentioned earlier in this pod. Let's keep Joe Burrow upright, right? Without Joe Burrow, where are the Cincinnati Bengals going to go? Uh, hey, I think they overachieved this year. They almost made the playoffs without Joe Burrow, which was wild. But again, got to gotta build around this kid. Got to prioritize Joe Burrow. Keep him upright. And the fact that he falls here at 18 Bengals fans are not only going to rejoice, they're not only going to be happy, but it feels like now their quarterback has a significantly better chance at at staying healthy moving forward. And and now look, man, Joe Burrow's had two major injuries throughout his short, relatively short career. So it this makes a lot of sense. I don't I don't think that anyone's going to argue on this pick with J.C. Latham going to the Cincinnati Bengals at 18 overall. Yeah, I mean. Just got done saying it with the Bengals. I'm, I'm not going to begrudge any offense. Teams never love it when fans never love it when they mm-hmm. take the offensive lineman because it's not fun and it's not sexy. But when it when it hits and that offensive line is no longer an issue and it's and it's actually like you know a big plus for your team. It is it is really really the best thing you could possibly have outside of a you know a front four who can get home uh, reliably uh, game in game out. So not upset about that at all. How about? Uh, the LA Rams now on the clock at 19. They've been, you know, they F them picks for a while. So now they're yeah. back in there, but they've been crushing the back end of these drafts. So now they're finally back up front a little bit. What do the Rams do for the first time in a while being up here? I don't even know if they remember how to do this. <laughs> yeah, right. I was just going to say first time they've had a first round pick in like, I, I don't even know how long it's, it's been a handful of years, 19 overall. The Rams are taking Nate Wiggins cornerback out of Clemson kid absolutely flew at the nfl combine and i believe he injured himself but he's gonna be okay come nfl draft come the start of the season man the rams are a team that's so funny they went from you know all in and uh they got the job done they got the ring and everybody's like man now they're uh they're gonna have to pay for it right now they have all these repercussions and it's like not really, man. They they look pretty good. They were uh, they were pretty scary last year for the most part. Matthew Stafford looked good. Uh, Puka Nakua, obviously. Uh, Kyron Williams and uh, you know Cooper Cup, I believe, will be healthier. He'll be better this upcoming season. But I think they need to focus on their defense, prioritize their corners, where I thought they were relatively weak. And I think their front office is is going to pull trigger on cornerback out of Clemson, Nate Wiggins, nineteen overall. Over, we're going over Cooper DeJean here. Yeah, Cooper DeJean is, uh, in my opinion, right there, neck and neck. I think that, again, I think that they're really going to, at this point, almost prioritize speed and his uh, tracking ability, I think, are some of his traits that really st- would stick out to this Los Angeles Rams front office. I think that's something that they're going to be more than more than content with. Yeah, um, I'm not terribly uh, well versed on exactly what Cooper Dejean. De- De- what, what do you? What was it? How'd you pronounce Cooper it? Cooper Dejean. Cooper Dejean. Um, but I don't think he's he's kind of a, a he kind of does a lot of different things. He kind of moves around in the in the formation. If I'm correct there, I don't think he necessarily just plays outside corner or 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 something. I'm pretty sure he's a he's a, a secondary player who can be kind of moved around a little bit. So could be wrong there. Let me know in the comments. And once again. You know, focusing mostly on fantasy guys at this point for your boy. But uh, Austin has this covered here. So let's go pick 20. Let's go Pittsburgh. What are they doing? Man. They just made a trade. They just traded Deontay away. They just picked up another corner. So what are we what are we thinking here for for Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is that team every year. I don't know how it happens. They just always have some great player fall to them. It's it's like it, it it's like clockwork, man. It's it's almost aggravating that that front office drafts so well, and we have Terry on Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama, falling to them at twenty. This is a team that absolutely needs to bolster their defense, needs more help at corner, and the fact that he is still Terry on Arnold, that is still on the board 
at 20 is it's wild to me. And I think that this truly could be reality. I think there's a real chance that this actually does occur again. Terry on Arnold quarterback out of Alabama sitting there 20th overall pick the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, the, I think that they're going to be significantly better on offense now that we have Russell Wilson. Um, I know Deontay is out of town. It's OK, right? I think Russell Wilson gives this team a significantly better chance at succeeding, putting up points. George Pickens will be better. Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, uh, Fryer Muth, you know, they got a lot of talent on offense. So I think that defense is where they're going to pivot. Again, Terry on Arnold, 20th overall, Pittsburgh Steelers. Terry on Arnold. All right. Like it. Give him a corner. Let's go Miami at 21. Yep. And what, I'll keep it play? Sh- short and sweet here. Jackson Powers Johnson. Center out of Oregon, 21st overall to the Miami Dolphins. I think they need two things at this point. I think they need a a better tight end. I think they need a better offensive line, right? Devon Achan and Raheem Mostert were phenomenal last season. Let's make them even better moving forward. Let's make their lives even easier moving forward. Of course, they have arguably the best wide receiver core in the NFL in uh, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. You know, Tua's got it made, man. So let's make Tua's life even easier. Let's give him a better offensive line. I loved what Jackson Powers Johnson did at Oregon, and I love what he can do here for the Miami Dolphins in 2024. Yeah, I think they signed some offensive linemen, but lost some offensive linemen. One of them might have been a center. Uh, that, that they that they brought in, but certainly doesn't mean they can't draft another good player here in, in uh, Powers Johnson here. So, uh, but really the idea is offensive lineman here. So I, I like it. Um, let's let's keep it moving to Philly, who is you know notorious for just trenching it up in the uh, in the picks here. Obviously, I just added Saquon, but lost Kelsey, uh, Fletcher Cox retiring as well. Um, so losing some pieces out there. Uh, but, you know, the, a lot of faith in this front office around uh, league circles. Roseman gets a lot of love. So what do we think Philly does here at 22? And you better get this one right because these guys are dickheads in the comments, I'm sure. <laughs> so I've, I have Philly going Cooper DeGene, quarterback out of Iowa. Man, they were eyeing up Nate Wiggins. They would have pulled trigger on Nate Wiggins. He's no longer on the board. He went 19 overall again to the Los Angeles Rams. Philly's here, 22 overall. Cooper DeGene is someone who fits Philly in so many ways. I think his speed, again, I, I think he's another cornerback who tracks the ball really well. I thought that he the, the routes that he took, the way he was able to jump routes, uh, his vision, I, I just thought he was an extremely well-rounded cornerback, again, out of Iowa. So uh, Philly is probably going to be sitting here thinking, man, like, what do we need to, to truly improve on this off season? And it was really like corner came to mind. I think they could absolutely also improve at the linebacking position as well. Yes. So uh, that's kind of where my head's at. How did you feel, Casey? Yeah, no, I agree. Linebacker. Um, I know being a 49ers fan of them getting us a year before and then us getting them this year. Uh, when you listen to Chris Long talk about it, it was, you know, a lot to do with the linebacker play. Just couldn't match up with what was kind of going on. And it's definitely a weakness of their team. Um, you kind of saw that as the season progressed. They brought back, uh, I think, C.J. Gardner-Johnson from the from the Lions after after one year. So I think they just added him back. I was Googling while you were talking and, and DeGene uh, has prospects of maybe moving to safety for some teams or playing corner. Um, so we could kind of do either potentially um so either one i think could help philadelphia linebacker wise is there a whole lot of first round linebackers in this draft right now it doesn't you know i don't think so uh, i know the nc state guy tested really well um and then you know does does alabama have a have a good linebacker somewhere that you can uh, throw out there but uh, i like the pick so let's keep it moving let's go to the yep. texans at 23 so they I just, have the Texans. Oh, sorry. Go on, Casey. Go ahead. No, they 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 haven't. Um, I think there were some rumors about Donnell Hunter going over to uh, Houston here. Um, so, what are your thoughts? Again, man, I've said it earlier in the pod, and I'll say it again. You can never have too many pass pass rushers. I have them taking Leatu Latu, edge rusher out of UCLA. Uh, man. The Texans are a team that have just completely revamped, completely turned around their franchise in one season. It is wild. They truly went from, I would argue, top three 
uh, consensus worst team in football. And here we are, man. They they have hit on their quarterback in a big way in CJ Stroud. Their wide receivers look incredible all, all of a sudden. I love what we saw out of Nico Collins this past season. He was he was phenomenal. I loved how they hit on Tank Dell. I believe the third round pick in the 2023 draft. Um even Noah Brown, I believe they just re-signed him today. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, right? they got him for a one-year deal. And they did yeah. bring in Donnell Hunter as well for two years. So right. that's right. a big get for them. Right. Uh, so uh, Houston Texans, I, I, you know, I think that they could they could add at the linebacking position. And I think that, again, a pass rusher is something that every team could use an abundance of. Leatu Latu feels like one of the better values at this point, in my opinion. So 23 overall. I don't necessarily know if he's yeah. going to last this long, man. He's I think he's closer to like a mid first round pick personally. But yeah. uh, they're, they're going to be more than content with this pick. Yeah, I could see Byron Murphy maybe going here too. I don't know what their you yep. know D tackle situation is, um, but st- staying in state and going uh, to to Houston. What do we got for Dallas at twenty four? Another back to back Texas picks here. What are we What are we thinking? And uh, it's funny because Byron Murphy was probably the very next player that I would have queued up in in that situation. Where I believe that they would have queued up of twenty fourth overall. The Dallas Cowboys are on the clock, Casey. It's going to get fun here. I have them taking Xavier Worthy, 24th mm. overall. I think that the Cowboys are looking to bolster up that wide receiving room. They want more firepower in this situation. You know, I understand they got Brandon Cooks. I understand that they have Michael Gallup. And of course, they have CD Lamb. I'm just talking about their wide receiver, too. Let's get some speed, man. 5'11. Uh, 165 pounds. Yes, we would like him to be a little bit heavier. It's okay. I'm sure he will be, right? I'm sure he will be. Clearly, he's got all the speed in the world. Just broke the the, the record. 4-2-1-40 time. Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas. And he had arguably the all-time greatest rookie campaign for a college wide receiver. That is how good of a season he put together at Texas. Just under 1,000 yards. Uh, he had just over a thousand yards this past season. So, uh, you know, Dallas could have went a few different directions here. They could have went linebacker. They could have went corner. I don't I think too many corners are off the board. They're looking to prioritize the wide receiver position. How Do you think that this is the route that the Cowboys go? How do you feel, Casey? Um, well, I would assume Cowboys maybe go offensive lineman here mm-hmm. potentially of just rebuilding those big nasties up front and, and picking, you know, maybe Mims, who's a guy who's a little more raw, but, but could have a lot of talent there. That seems like a high upside pick for the Cowboys um, or whichever other offensive lineman you like left at this point. Uh, but I, th- I think that's a good, a good call. Xavier worthy, a lot of fun that, you know, it's technically a need for them, I guess. Um, I believe Brandon Cook's still under contract over there. Um, and Michael Gallup hasn't been terribly effective. Ferguson was good this year, but, you know, CD, obviously one of the best receivers in the league. They could also use a linebacker. Like you said, I was kind of perusing some linebackers here. Um, looked like the um, Texas A&M linebacker was was uh, somebody, Edrin Cooper, who could go. And, and uh, the NC State guy was another one. There was, a, I believe, a UCLA uh, or a Duke inside. Uh, that's an interior lineman, rather. Um, so there's a couple of linebackers it seems like could go mid to late first here. Uh, but I, Xavier Worthy, I'm not going to – I love Xavier Worthy, so I'm not going to argue with it. Say it in Texas. It's a splashy play um, for for Dak. And, is you know, it seems like they're going to roll into owing him $60 million bucks this year um, and playing on this, uh, this last year of the deal. So – uh, let's add some weapons and, and, and see if he could do it. They also need a running back, but I don't know what the hell they're doing at that position. Seems seems a little odd, but I, yeah. I, I think that'll be addressed by them maybe a little further down the line. So let's go to Green Bay. They don't need a running back. They brought in Josh Jacobs. Um, they lost Runyon. They could be losing Bakhtiari. Maybe they need some more offensive line help. Where, where, where are you going with, with Green Bay here? Yep, 25th overall, the Green Bay Packers are taking Amarius Mims, a massive, massive human being tackle out of Georgia. They just brought in Josh Jacobs on a, was it a $48 million deal? Might have been 40 years. It was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're 
Man, it's a new era in Green Bay. I mean, of course, Jordan Love looked phenomenal last season. I love the receivers that they got. I think they want to prioritize and and again, they build around Jordan Love. They saw what he's capable of. They're like, man, we gotta we gotta absolutely you know keep him the focal point of this offense. We gotta absolutely make sure that he's upright. And uh, Marius Mims, man, he is <laughs> he is a mammoth of a human being. So uh, I'm excited for this pick. This is. It's not necessarily sexy like you mentioned before, Casey, but I believe it's absolutely the right choice. Green Bay Packers are going to be a true threat in the NFC for for a long time. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, Mims Mims is uh, a wild one there. He seems seems like a lot of fun. Uh, Could be huge. Uh, Let's go Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 26. Uh, A little bit of a surprise team. Don't think didn't think they they would be picking this low. I thought they'd be one of those teams up at the top, uh, but. Uh, I think they just traded Carlton Davis. Uh, they lost some players. They re-signed some players. Um, they're bringing that whole offense back, running it back, and why not? So what do uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks do in this situation in round one here? They're going to focus on defense here, man. I think they're going to actually land Byron Murphy the second out of Texas. So... This is a player who realistically, I think he's going to go closer to like 18 to 22 range. But the way that this draft unfolded, the the way that things played out, I think they're going to be more than more than happy with Byron Murphy. The second Uh, the man, the Bucks were just talk about a team that surprised everybody this season. Right. And I think that you can argue maybe they need more help at tight end. Maybe they meet. They probably need more pass rushers as well. Um they just lost, was it Carlton Davis, their corner, mm-hmm. right? He's now mm-hmm. in uh, Detroit. So I, I think corner was another position they were looking to focus on. But it ultimately comes down to BPA, Byron Murphy, falling to them at 26. They're going to be pumped about this. Yeah, Byron Murphy, 26. I think that's a quite a value there uh, at, at, at pick 26. So Zona back on the board. Uh, they've, they've taken Marvin Harrison in this potential scenario here. So what's the next move? They stay offensive. They go defense. What do you think? Yeah, up 27 overall. Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. And I have them taking Kool-Aid McKinstry. Mm. So Kool-Aid, man, he, he, he wasn't necessarily as great as I expected this season. I thought he was actually more impressive the previous year. But it, it is what it is. I think that he's still deserving of being a first-round pick. I think Kool-Aid makes perfect sense i think it's logical i think it's the rational choice they do need more corners um and he he was he was a really good player at alabama this year man and and look we earlier in the draft we had them going four overall marvin harrison jr i think they absolutely got that pick right and i think they absolutely got this pick right as well the only other position i think that they were strongly considering was offensive line and at the end of the day, I think that uh, I, I don't think that's the direction that they're going to ultimately go. I like it. Uh, Arizona 27 uh, McKinstry. So at 28, we got the Buffalo Bills losing, seeming to lose a lot of pieces on uh, throughout this team here in this cycle. Uh, but what are we what are we thinking for for Buffalo here? We got another receiver off the board. They, they've lost uh, Gabe Davis and. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with Stefan Diggs in the future. So they could be looking to the future of adding another wide receiver here, or they could be going, you know, defensive minded head coach wants to build uh, that way. So uh, a couple of good prospects left on defense here. What's your thoughts? I think this is one of the more intriguing picks, man. The 28th overall pick, the Buffalo Bills going Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas. Ooh. I don't think there's any question that it, that it has to be wide receiver. Everybody knows that, right? It's the worst kept secret in football, worst, worst kept secret in the world. The Buffalo Bills just lost Gabe Davis, right? He just signed a pretty, pretty nice contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Aside from... Uh, 31, I believe he's 31 now, Stefan Diggs, right? Ch- check me on that. He might be 30. He's he's not young, man. But besides him, who is it? Khalil Shakir? Uh, you'd have to pivot to tight end. I'm talking strictly wide receivers for the Buffalo Bills. So Adonai Mitchell, man, he's got crazy height, speed. He checks so many boxes. Uh, really, really low drop rate as well this past season. I think, I think Buffalo... Again, absolutely walks away with a wide receiver. Josh Allen is, is going to be more than happy about this. Yeah, stud. Okay, getting getting him a potential stud there. You got to got to keep Josh happy. Um, I could see them 
potentially going on the defensive side of the things, but I, I can't I can't disagree with that pick. So Detroit Lions in a position they haven't been in a whole lot, picking 29. What are your thoughts where Detroit goes in this 2024 first round NFL draft? So Detroit could go a lot of different directions. Uh, I think that they still might need a little bit more help at corner. I think that you could argue their defensive line, but I have them ultimately going tackle out of Washington. Troy Fatano, I believe that this is a team that wants to keep Jared Goff in a good position upright. This is a team that needs to still, uh, not not only are they still going to compete for the foreseeable future right now, it kind of feels like it's their division to lose the Detroit Lions. That is, they were they were dominant in the NFC North last year. They were, they were just dominant from start to finish. Um, I think that this is a team that, you know, now... It's interesting, man. Jameer Gibbs, they prioritized him last year. They took him 12 overall. He was second running back off the sure. board. Right? They, they, they want to put some big dogs in front of him. They want to make his life easier. You know, he doesn't have necessarily the biggest frame standing out. I think he's like five, what, five, 10, uh, 200 pounds, right? Not the biggest guy, but one of the more athletic players in football. And uh, they, they just have to move forward with, a, again, not a necessarily sexy pick, but the right choice. So it, this is this is kind of where I landed. How are you feeling about this, Casey? I'm I'm not necessarily upset about it. I would I would may, maybe maybe go a little more interior lineman mm -hmm. for them. Um, but yeah, sure. Give me, give me, give me the big guy. Um, and I think that's a, a once again, probably a pretty good value. I, I, we, we need, we need a good influx of, of good offensive linemen. And hopefully this is the draft to kind of give it to us. It seems like it, it possibly could be, um, and a lot of them flying off the board here. So, um, Detroit at 29, going tackle out of Washington 30 Baltimore Ravens just signed Derrick Henry filling a need at their running back position. Uh, they lost Patrick Queen uh, to Pittsburgh and and a few other players here and there. Um, so what are we doing with Baltimore at pick thirty? Oh man, I am torn between two players. Uh, I I'm coming down. It's coming down to the wire. But ultimately, I think that Baltimore is is going to add a wide receiver. I really believe that deep down. This I'm trying to focus on what is reality, what's actually going to happen. And there's two different players. There's two different players that, that it ultimately comes down to. I think I really I know we didn't have the, a great combine. I think Troy Franklin kind of bounces back. I think they're going to look to get faster. I think they're going to look for more height. Right. I know he doesn't have a big frame. Right. He was thinner. But um, and he did come a little bit slower at the NFL. He, he ended up you know running a little bit slower at the NFL combine. Uh, his his. Uh, Gauntlet drill was not ideal, but it's okay, man. His collegiate production was was absolutely real. And, uh, you know, this Baltimore Ravens offense got absolutely shut down by the by the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs, right? They're, they just added more firepower, you mentioned, in Derrick Henry. Love that. So Troy Franklin here paired with Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson. I mean, let's go, man. Like, this is, <laughs> this is, this is, this is great. I think this is awesome. Like I'm still in on Rashad Bateman because I just can't quit him. I'm I'm kind of joking, <laughs> but um, man, they 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 really do need a second wide receiver at this point. OBJ is a free agent. Don't know where he's going to be. Uh, so Troy Franklin, man, fire me up. I'm I'm pumped about this one. How do you feel, Casey? Yeah, I mean, just adding you know a a fast down the field field stretching kind of guy to go along with everything else they have, you know, you're going to probably lose Odell. You lost du Duvernay, which whatever. Um, but you know, you got another year, I think of, of Bateman potentially. Um, and they've been talking up Bateman, but you know, I, I like Bateman as well, but uh, you know, I think, I think you got to add here and I wouldn't mind seeing you add a little bit more firepower in Troy Franklin. So I, I don't, I don't hate it necessarily. Um, there's, like I said, those couple of linebackers are still hanging around. I could see somebody grabbing them in this mix here. Um, but Troy Franklin could, could make some sense for the Ravens. Give him a, another dimension on offense. Let Munkin uh, take year two of that offense to another level. So pick 31, we got San Fran uh, on the clock. What are your thoughts here? I think San Fran's got to focus on their offensive line, man. I think that Tyler Guyton tackle mm, out of yeah. Oklahoma – Fits very, very well for this team. 49ers, man, let's face it. They're in the Super Bowl. 
They, they were right there. They can clearly go toe to toe. They can compete with anybody in the NFL. Let's prioritize this offensive line. Let's keep Brock Purdy in a better situation. I know he's in a very good situation to begin with. This team can still improve in some ways. I thought that corner was another need for them. Um, Casey, where are you at with the 49ers? What do you think are some of their biggest needs right now? Yeah, I mean, offensive line is something that I would love for them to address here and, and take another shot at, at a good offensive lineman. Guyton was the guy that I'd be probably eyeballing here. So I think you hit that one kind of right on the head. Uh, corner potentially could be something else they need. Um, you know, maybe some depth at linebacker, but you probably don't you probably don't go there at this point. Um, you know, D lines pretty strong, uh, but there's still some edge guys hanging around here. Chop Robinson, I think, is still on the board. If I'm not wrong, or did we did somebody take him already? No, Chop Robinson is still on the board. That's correct. So, you know, Niners are sitting around and and there's another good ad. They're not they're not afraid to add more strength on strength. Um, so if, if there's an edge that they like, I could see them maybe potentially going there. But offensive line inevitably, I think, would be the best case scenario for uh, San Fran here at, at 31. So uh, let's wrap this up with 32. Obviously, you know, I, I think, you know, wide receiver here is the fun thing to add for, for the Chiefs. So what? What say you for the last pick of the drafts for the Super Bowl champion, uh, Kansas City Chiefs? Man, this is so tough. We're in such a unique situation here, Casey, where the Chiefs absolutely need a wide receiver more than anything. I don't necessarily think, you know, we, we got one guy specifically staring right at us. That's Lad McConkey. Ooh, baby. I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily know if that's the way that the Chiefs are going to go in the first round. It does feel a little rich because Lad He's is probably, he, dude, Lad is probably going to go closer to like that 35 to like 42 range. But the Chiefs are not going to be back on the clock for a long time. We're talking another 32 picks. So I, Man, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's take Lad McConkey with the final pick. Let's have fun with it. Let's let Patrick Mahomes get his guy. Let's get mm. him another weapon. Pair with Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Pacheco, um, and uh, Rashi Rice. So let's do it, man. I have this is the one of the first drafts that I've personally seen completed where Lad McConkey is in the first round. Again, I, I fully expect him to be early, early second. But this is. This could happen like this absolutely could happen. There's a world that exists where Lad McConkey is a first round pick. Um, I don't I don't know if we're going to see it in this draft. It did happen, though. So uh, Chiefs yeah, I mean, fans, you, you got another receiver. Congratulations. I love it. I love Lad. That's my guy. <laughs> uh, um, so him going to the Chiefs would be awesome for for fantasy because that's what we're doing. And, and, I, and I really do believe that Lad's a very solid receiver. Uh, bummer for, you know, the Niners, my guys, and and the rest of the league to add another, I think, really, really solid route runner uh, and obviously got some good speed there as well. So uh, that would be a huge bummer for the rest of the league if Ladd pans out to be anything. So just adding strength to, um, you know, probably one of the weaker parts of their team. They, they've added uh, – they, they signed Chris Jones long-term. They, they tagged Legarius, so we'll see where that goes. So maybe they could – potentially, you know, go after a corner here because, you know, do they lose Legarius? Uh, but Pat just, you know, restructured and made a bunch of cap room so they can make another move. And that's what um, good winning quarterbacks do. Uh, they free up some cap space so that you can go uh, acquire more talent uh, and go for that three-peat as, as much as I hate that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps it up. Austin, you got anything for the way out? Um, uh, final thing I'll say, man, is, uh, I, I think that this, you know, clearly there were an abundance of wide receivers. I think that's inevitable. Uh, Bo Nix did not go in this draft in the first Ooh. round. Did that, did that surprise you, Casey? I know that you were surprised with how early, um, J uh, Michael Penix Jr. went. Do you think that Michael Penix will be a first round pick? Do you think that we'll see Bo Nix in the first round? Where are you at with that? I hope we see uh, Penix. I, you know, my personal belief is I like Penix the most out of the the second tier of quarterbacks. He's my preference, um, but I think, you know, I think you'll see at least two of the three go. W which th two out of the three it is, I don't know. It seems like JJ McCarthy is certainly going to be one of them and go higher than I would like to see him. That I would 
personally take him. Uh, but you know, it's no slight on my man. He's a good, good player. Mm-hmm. Um, just not my cup of tea. Um, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be awesome and, and you shouldn't take him. Uh, I, I could see Bo Nix potentially, you know, going to the Raiders or um, going to Seattle or, you know, or Penix going to Seattle and Nick's going, you know, a little earlier to the Vikings or something. So there is a reality where six quarterbacks go in this first round, just because there is, yeah. you know, there's a lot of guys with uh, some question marks now and, and, you know, there's some scarcity at the position and we don't really know what's going to happen. And, and it's really comes down to, do you want to take the risk on that first round pick and, and potentially get the fifth round option on those guys? Or do you think you can wait until the second and maybe two of them will be left in the second and maybe you can trade up to, to grab your guy. So, um, but a lot of those teams now at least have a placeholder to go through and be competent in a season. Now, I don't know if Sam Donald will be competent or not, but you know, he, willingly went to San Francisco, took a little less money and tried to get a little rejuvenation. The old Baker Mayfield going to to L.A. Uh, But, you know, Baker landed in a really good spot with a great guy who's been developing quarterbacks through his young career in Canales. And it got him a job and he had, you know, a good offense around him and and a good defense around him. So those things all kind of play into, I think, how quarterbacks, any player, a lot of players end up kind of working out. So. I think it's all in how you can get there, what's around you, and the plan they have in place to develop you um, is so big. Uh, but I think Penix needs the least amount of development and, and can plug into the right system, especially like a Minnesota Vikings style system right away. I would love right, to see that. Right. And I think, you know, um, the offensive coordinator from Washington going to Seattle, you know, it could be a link to Penix at some point uh, for, for Seattle as well. Let Geno play for a year. Penix sits. And then you move forward with Penix and, uh, you know, the whole new staff over there. So, um, you know, I, I don't I, I don't really love Bo Nix either. So I'm not going to be like, yeah, Bo Nix definitely has to go in the first round. Um, but I, I'm the odd man out here in most people's opinion that Penix will be the should be the odd man out. So uh, how about you? What what do you got to take us out of here? Um, yeah, I'll just touch on the quarterbacks real quick. That we'll, we'll get going. Um I don't I don't think we're going to see I don't think we're going to see Bo Nix in the first round. I've been going back and forth. Um, there, there's definitely a chance like there's definitely a real chance. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, J.J. McCarthy, of course, absolutely going. There will be a team that reaches on him, whether it's Denver, whether it's the Saints, whether it's, you know, the Raiders or uh, Giants. Who, right. The Giants, like as early as the Giants. Um, uh, but. Michael Penix is is the final person I want to touch on, man. And I just, he is so difficult for me personally to predict where he actually goes. And I know in in this draft specifically, he went 14 overall to the Saints. Man, here's what I'll say. It only takes one team. That's yeah. all it takes, right? It's just one pick. One, one guy has to be happy. One guy has to just be convinced that you are the future. And I think that there's going to be a team that that says Michael Penix Jr. like you're a guy in the first round. I think it's going to happen. If I was a betting man, I would I would absolutely put money on Penix being in the first round. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I just think that his body of work, his success was uh, it, it was more than evident, right? And I know Casey, you're the biggest fan of of Penix Jr. There is, but uh, I, th- I think he's going to be a first round pick. So this was fun, man. This was a good exercise. This yeah. was unique. I know we normally don't do. Uh, our own mock drafts of what we think NFL GMs will actually do. But this was, again, this was a different episode uh, and I I hope y'all enjoyed it. This was fun for me. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time, fun exercise, Uh, but we appreciate you guys out there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking this out. There's a Patreon. You can, you can hop on, be sure to like subscribe, comment below. Like, like Austin said, not necessarily in our, in our vein per se, but I, I think it's a, it's a good exercise and it's, uh, it's fun to talk about these things and and there's all those fantasy guys kind of relevant in there. And we, we, we talk through some of those guys. So uh, overall, just talking about the NFL in general gets me, gets me hyped up and we got the draft right around the corner here. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll do one, another one of these once it gets a little closer. So Austin, we can catch you where on the, uh, on the Twitter machines and social medias. Yep. At Austin Abbott FF on all social media platforms. 
be sure to go check that out. He's posting all sorts of shit, especially on the Twitter machines. Uh, got you covered on the rookie class, and we'll be back with more. We got uh, plenty more rookie coverage. We got plenty more regular standard dynasty coverage. We're going live at least every other week with a with a startup mock draft. So be sure to follow us at the FF Dynasty on there so you can follow along with that or maybe even join in the mocks. We usually send out some to the public, but most of them go to the patrons. Uh, so again, $5 Howl on the Discord, get a roster review, all that jazz. We get extra three episodes on the Patreon uh, and, the, and the FFD Discord. So we appreciate you guys and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.